Hi, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for watching and for subscribing. And if you're just visiting, please consider subscribing. So today we're going to complete uh, my three video top 10 series. And we're going to talk about my top 10 for life. If I could only keep 10 fragrances for the rest of my life, these are the ones that I would choose. And let's start with two honorable mentions. I want to mention these fragrances, but in this honorable mention category, because A, I've spoken about them a million times, and B, I feel like these two would be on my top 10 list, like any top 10 list. If I could really include them every single time, I think I would. So what am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about Rosé All Day from Gallagher and, of course, my favorite gourmand scent, which is Unknown Pleasures from Kerosene. Yes, these honestly will always be on any top 10. This is a beastly sweet and sour combination that I just go crazy over. And this is the most amazing gourmand that to me smells like tea with condensed milk. Absolutely love both of these, have spoken about them many, many, many times, but these are my true loves. And let's start with Crush On Me from Unique You Luxury. I fell in love with this scent as soon as I tried it. This is caramel, patchouli, ginger, and I think lime or lemon, something like that. So ginger and lime, they give this freshness to the scent uh, that's evident, especially in the opening. And then we have amazing combination of caramel and patchouli that sounds really simple, but in reality is not that simple and doesn't smell like, you know, anything else. It smells really, really different. It smells special. I love the scent. I'm addicted to the scent and it is absolutely beastly. You know, I can spray it in the morning and I can still smell it at the end uh, of the day. Sometimes I can still smell it the next morning. It is absolutely beastly and I love it. Also, I have to include La Belle in my top 10 for life. I went with a Le Parfum version, although I love both the original La Belle and this flanker. But, uh, you know, in recent times, it seems like I'm gravitating a little bit more towards uh, this Le Parfum version. So that's why I included it. This is pear, tonka bean, jasmine, and uh, vanilla, of course. And... I've mentioned before, it doesn't smell like pear all that much. To me, it's more about red berries. It's about some chocolate nuances coming from tonka bean. Of course, sweetness from vanilla. Jasmine, I don't really get here at all. This is such an intoxicating kind of um, happy, easygoing fragrance for me. Whenever I'm not sure uh, of what to wear, this is the one I reach for very, very often. And so, of course, I have to have it as my top 10 for life. Next, I have Lamar from Kajal. Uh, got this fragrance last summer and have been crazy about it ever since. This is mostly about pineapple. There's also some spices in here. There's also, I think, green apple in here, which adds a bit of sourness. So in the opening, or probably the first couple of hours, it it really smells like this fresh, juicy, spicy pineapple. And then when it develops on the skin, it becomes more syrupy, a lot more syrupy and kind of dense. So this becomes more like some kind of um, pineapple syrup that you would put on top of some kind of pastry. So yeah, it becomes very syrupy in a dry down. I love both stages of development in this fragrance. And so this one is definitely in my top. This is Atomic Rose from Initio. Uh, I've tested, originally tested this fragrance a long, long time ago, and I knew that I liked it. It just, it took me some time to actually purchase it, but uh, no regrets about finally purchasing it. Um, this is a great addition to my rose collection. Some compare this fragrance to Delina. 
Um, I would compare it more to the Lina Exclusive. I think it's closer to ex Exclusive than to the original. But definitely, you know, going in the same direction. There's no denying it. There are different types of rose in here. I think there are other florals. There's pink pepper in here. There is vanilla, of course, amber, I don't know, something else. Um, and to me, it's a really kind of um, dense, really creamy and even slightly smoky rose. Yeah, that's what it smells like. It's beautiful, beautiful rose. I, you know, I'm a little bit surprised how much I have been wearing it since I got it. I've been wearing it a lot, even wearing to the office, wearing it to like uh, on the weekend if I'm going somewhere. Yeah, I have been using it a lot. And so, you know, there are many rose fragrances that I love. In fact, there will be another one on this list, but this is the one that I would definitely need to keep. Well, since we started talking about roses, let me mention the other rose perfume that I would have to keep. Uh, this is Dom Rosa from Liquid Imaginaries. Very, very different rose uh, compared to Atomic Rose. Very different. This is rose and champagne. This is like you have this bouquet of fresh roses standing in front of you and you just poured yourself uh, a glass of champagne. You have uh, this fizzy, sparkly feel of champagne. That's what it smells like. There's also, I think, ginger in here and pear, which definitely add a little bit of um, fruitiness and maybe a touch of freshness to this. I think there is a musk in here. I can't remember what else, but really it's about this sparkly, fresh rose. Uh, this uh, always reminds me of some kind of um, happy occasion, of some kind of celebration. Like to me, this scent is celebratory, probably because there is champagne in it. I don't know. But um, yeah, it always uh, puts me in the mood like I'm celebrating something, you know, kind of reminds me of that. So it's a beautiful, beautiful rose and champagne combination. Uh, gorgeous. I don't have anything like that, uh, anything else like that in my collection. So definitely choosing this as part of my top 10 for life. Next on the list is a fragrance from the House of Oud and that is Keep Glazed. This is my fruity dessert fragrance. It is about mango, but not like fresh fruit mango. This is some kind of dessert with mango. There's whipped cream in here. There is a lemon. There is possibly a strawberry in here, vanilla. I don't know what else, but it just really feels like a dessert. You know, it's um, fresh and sweet at the same time. Yeah, it's a really beautiful, fresh, very bright, very bright uh, combination. Delicious. Yeah, what can I say? Love this scent and that's definitely part of my top 10 at the moment. And I already mentioned that in the first video in this series, but let me say it again. You know, these are my choices of today. You know, my tastes and preferences change quite often. So if you ask me to do this video in a few months, Okay, maybe not a few months, but like in, um, I don't know, half a year or something. Some of these choices might change and that's perfectly logical to me because my tastes and preferences change. Next, I'm going to include a beautiful orange blossom scent that is Sintra from Mammal. This is this really, really sweet orange blossom combination reminiscent of Killian Love. Here we have orange blossom, of course, there is vanilla. Can't remember if there are actually marshmallows in here. I don't know, but there is definitely a lot of sweetness in here. But then there is also Neroli and Pettigrain, which really bring a lot of greenness to this fragrance, especially in the opening. Um, I know some people don't actually like that, but I like that element of this fragrance. It just tones down the this intense sweetness uh, that's in here, and I really, really like it. So this is, I don't want to say my favorite, but uh, one of my absolute favorite Orange Blossom scents, and so I am choosing it as part of this list. Now, I also need to have a really good citrusy scent, and my 
absolute favorite here. I can honestly easily say absolute favorite citrus scent that I have is Aqua Celestia Forte from Maison Francis Kirkajan. I love, love, love this scent. You know, he has... I think three lines of these uh, aqua fragrances, which are all really fresh kind of citrusy scents. There is Aqua Celestia, Aqua Universalis, and uh, Aqua Vitae, I think. I've tried all of them. For me, personally, by far, Celestia is the best line. I know that some have said that this, fra uh, this um, fragrance is a little bit uh, more masculine than feminine. Well, maybe, yeah. For me, it is totally unisex, and I love it. There is a bunch of different citruses in here. Obviously, lime, lemon. There's also mint in here, which brings even more freshness to the scent. Like, it's not really minty, but it's just fresh, like a breath of fresh air, you know, together with these citruses. There are some florals in here, and then, of course, there is musk. So, overall, it's um, citrusy, musky scent. Absolutely refreshing, absolutely beautiful, and a huge, huge bonus of this fragrance for me is the performance, because citrusy scents typically are worst performing scents. They don't stay on me for very long at all. They disappear pretty quickly. This one, however, is really long lasting, especially for a citrus scent. I mean, it's not a beast. It's not a fragrance that will last you like, uh, you know, 10, 12 hours, but it easily lasts me six hours, I would say, and it projects really well throughout the whole time. So for me, for a citrusy scent, it's a pretty amazing performance. So yeah, this one is amazing. Again, this is Aqua Celestia Forte from MFK. Next, I have a really beautiful chocolate scent, and that is Gourmand Coquine from Guerlain. Well, this is chocolate, this is vanilla, this is rum. Uh, what else is in here? Uh, cacao. There are some spices in here. Uh, it's a beautiful chocolate scent that's not too sweet. It is definitely a little bit uh, boozy. I would say it's a touch woody as well. Not really spicy to me, but maybe to some it will be spicy, but not to me. So it's a uh, chocolate, uh, boozy, um, a little bit, just a touch, touch, touch woody, beautiful, elegant chocolate scent one of the best, and I need to have it as my top 10. And so that brings us to the last fragrance in this list, and I went with Meliora from Parfums de Marly. This is definitely not uh, the most popular Parfums de Marly, not the most talked about, but, you know, this was actually one of my mm, first purchases of niche fragrance. I mean, not the very first, but I purchased it quite early on in my, let's call it a uh, fragrance journey. And I love it. And I really think it deserves more love than it gets. I kind of feel that way. You know, so much talk happens about Delina. So much love is dedicated to Delina. But I think Meliora is quite beautiful as well. This, of course, is about black currant. Um, there are also some red berries in here. Um, there's musk in here. I think there's vanilla, whatever else. And black currant is a, the star player here. Um, but it's it's almost like I'm not just getting the actual, you know, black currant. I'm also getting black currant leaf. It's sort of a, a combination of the two. So it's sweet, musky black currant with a slight slight touch of greenness i think that's how i would describe it i love this scent absolutely love it and it's kind of a a staple for me in the summer so that's why i chose it as my top 10 for life so there you go. This was uh, the end of this uh, top 10 series. And these are the fragrances that I would absolutely need to have if I could only have 10 fragrances uh, in my collection. Please let me know what would you choose as your top 10 for life. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, 
please remember to give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you soon in the next video. Bye!